The actual photographs that I used as reference, the mountains weren't quite as pushed back with the sky color. You know what I mean? Right, right. So that may have been more photorealistic, but the problem is the photo itself does not create that same sense of just vastness and openness and just how big those mountains are. It's kind of getting flattened a little, not because the colors or contrast are inaccurate compared to what the human eye would see, but be now you don't have what your skin feels and what your ears sense and what your nose senses. And you know what I mean? All of that right. other sensory data is gone. And so it's important now that you only have the eyes of the viewer to rely on, you have to exaggerate those things to get back to a more realistic sense. Ironically, the photo, even though it's photorealistic, even though it's exact visual data, because it's not compensating for the visual data, it can actually often be a far less accurate communicator of the feeling of being in that place, of the feeling of vastness and stuff like that, which is often very important in a video game. You really want to emphasize the distance in space or the scale of a castle you're going towards or something like that. So you yeah. need to learn as an artist how these rules work so that you can break them and exaggerate to communicate these things. So aside from that, I already touched on this idea of learning what to leave out. And we briefly touched on abstract art and how even then, by far the best abstract artists are going to be the ones that learned what the rules are or the ways of communicating that are nearly universal, even if subconscious in most people. And you learn how to exaggerate and to break these rules to communicate something, even with abstract shapes on a canvas or something. You're still using these things that you've learned as a communicator, which is the whole job of an artist. But anyway, so we touched on abstract and I wanted to talk on that thing in the middle which should be considered the sweet spot or the, the most critical fine art school that aspiring game artists should look into is impressionistic art. Because in a sense, even realistic artists, that's we're always doing that. No painter ever, no matter how photorealistic, has ever literally captured every detail of what they're doing. Right. Yeah. Like no painter has ever literally gotten out a microscope and painted every last hair follicle on the portrait of a person that they've, they've come close, some of them, the crazy people, but it's never been done, nor would it make sense to spend the time doing so, especially if you're working on a whole video game. So the right. point is, yeah. you're always making judgment calls as an artist of how deep into detail you want to go. And learning how to intentionally reduce detail, leave out things, and then exaggerate the things that are important are going to make you a drastically better storyteller and communicator as a visual artist. And because we were going to be talking about this topic, or we got together some of the best examples of my all-time favorite impressionist artist, whose name was John Singer Sargent. And it is to me a tragedy to all great art everywhere in art history that everyone who's an aspiring artist of any kind doesn't know him by name. An absolutely brilliant artist, and he's the perfect example. To me, he is the pinnacle of what impressionist art should have been, or should have stayed, because he had the sort of street cred. He proved himself doing years or decades of incredibly rigorous study of doing very classical realist, representational, very high detailed art. When he left out details, it was very intentional. When he made a representational impressionistic painting of a portrait of someone and there's chairs or other things in the background, the fact that he represented those things in the background with a handful of brush strokes was not because he was lazy. It's not because it was quote unquote his style. It's because he made himself so powerful as an artist with his decades of practice and study that he could do it. Right. Yeah. There's a big difference there. So, yep. Go so ahead. what are these, what are these photos here have to do with that? I mean, <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah, no, that's a great, that's a great point is these look when they're small thumbnails, a lot of these can look like a photo and that's the whole point. And, and I had the pleasure in Boston, they, they had a uh, John Singer Sargent exhibition. That's the word, right? Yeah. And I got to see what a finally, most of these paintings, like these portraits, I'll just load one up now. 
It's massive. Uh, this one actually is tiny, but most of them are really big. And if you stand at it from several yards away, it looks more realistic than a photograph. Hyper real. You could see from this little portrait here, it's not the details that make this so enthralling and real. And it, it's not just like, oh wow, that looks like a photo. It's like, holy crap, that guy is about to stand up and confront me. Right. That guy's eyes, his posture, the way he's sitting in his chair, like he's practically about to get out of it and walk towards you. That's uh, also called uh, Contrapposto, which was mastered by or long before Sargent in the Renaissance Italy. It's the whole idea of intentionally twisting the torso or the neck and the limbs to create the sense of movement, to create the sense of life in someone that's otherwise, quote unquote, just sitting there. So. The engagement, the furrowed brow, the focus of this guy's pupils, this, you could see there's a level of sort of pursing to his mouth and the, the way the, the, the mustache and the lines of the cheeks, everything accentuates the fact that he's in the middle of an intense expression. Mm -hmm. This is more of a frozen moment in time than any photograph could ever be because it compensates for that missing sensory data in a way that no photograph ever could. Unless it was he right. heavily manipulated could, by an artist. You could have, exactly, you could have someone sort of performing this general action and get yeah. it on video, but right. you're never going to get a single, single frame image that is as perfectly crafted as right. this post. And it's right. just impactful. It communicates so many things. And this is a mantra I'm going to repeat in so many videos in the future. The most critical thing to keep in mind as an artist to make powerful art, to make your art better faster, is always be telling a story. Right. And John Singer Sargent, he almost never just painted a thing. He exactly. was always conveying a story. He was taking a large moment in time and doing a masterful job of encapsulating and exaggerating all of it in a single image. And it literally, so many of his images, including this one, can just make the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. It's just so communicative. It's so expressive. And even just yep. if you look how his stretched out leg there, yep. with the one he's kind of like putting out there to get up with, right? it, it goes clear to the bottom of the image. Right. And it leads your eyes straight up with yep. the line created by his, his shirt there yep. straight to his face. Right. The fact now if that foot had been maybe a little in a different spot or his right. knee was bent and it was like his foot was to one side and the leg right. wasn't so straight like that, right. it wouldn't achieve that as well. Right. right? It was deliberately right. But that, you yeah. see what I'm saying? And again, so, th this goes to what to leave out. Not just the placement right. and layout, but what to leave out. Look at the brilliance. Look how the face is very detailed for an Impressionist art. But you've got this circle that just, it's like the fuzzy brush in Photoshop. It puts a solid color in the center and it just gets more and more blurry as it goes yeah. out. You've got the same thing. And this makes it impossible for the viewer to focus on the wrong thing. Literally everything else is out of focus and it all is a circle, a target going to this person's face. It's yep. so brilliantly done. And another thing, I as a really fanatical figure artist that, uh, that really cares about creating the illusion of the proper form of the thing in space and foreshortening, if I had done this painting, I would have been so incredibly tempted to hit a brighter highlight on this knee so that you don't end up with a more amorphous shape. Right, like right. really delineate. There's a, there's a plane that's very much almost flat like a tabletop surface of this thigh. And then there's where, where the, the knee should transition to this very sharp change in angle because now you've got the lower leg going downward. And I would have been so tempted to hit a stronger highlight at, at that edge there and in the knee and sort of taper it yep. to really create that image. But that, that would have been very distracting from the focal point. Exactly. You know what I mean? So now you've got this leg, which, which seems hyper real when you just look at the thing in general, especially from yards back. And remember, this is a very small painting, this particular one. You could see how it's just like one or two blurry brushstrokes for each of these details in the carpeting here. You know, the wall again, mm -hmm. it's just like thrown in. And you could see how big each particular brush bristle was. This, you know, when he was knocking in this background, it's just these perfectly placed highlights on this middle tone 
tone color to establish the form you know like you get the feeling that this is a detailed tablecloth but when you look at the actual details it's like a handful of swirly wrist flicking brush strokes with a fairly primary colors into a still wet he worked in oils predominantly when he worked on these larger or more detailed things but we're going to see some of his watercolor sketches which are equally impressive but anyway the whole point is knowing what you can leave out, what you should leave out, how things should should be intentionally out of focus when that's appropriate. Just telling that story, like that catching that highlight not only conveys to you that that is a hard, shiny, smooth metal object, but you get a little more detail about this character. Like that's his ring finger, he's a married man, you know what I mean? That's a gold ring. Yep. That so simple, hand, and it tells right, the story it, just that. It that just little spot on his you know, finger, it, you it's know? it's like it makes all of us a bit of a Sherlock Holmes, even if it's happening subconsciously. Everything that's not like just a single brushstroke, it's telling you part of the story. It's setting this mood, and it's just and so and it's sort done. of like how he's how he's got the one hand on the book, as though yep. that's what he was doing. He exactly. was reading that book, but he's closed it. See how his fingers? Right. He's keeping are the page in the in the middle. He's exactly. keeping the page, and then his other hand looks far more agitated like if you right. look at you he's, see he's tightly clawing the chair it. right as like not just because he's getting up but it's it's it gives you the feeling of uneasiness right you know like he's been disturbed always so. be telling a story right? right so this is what he was doing he was calm he was reading mm -hmm. he's now engaged in a in a, a conversation that is clearly very relevant to him and he wants it to be relevant to you you now have his full attention. So again, a single moment in time, but you know what he was doing. Mm -hmm. You know how he transitioned out of what he was doing by keeping the page and closing the book. And you can literally follow time from here. You can literally follow time to mm -hmm. into the imbalance. So you have a static book on a table that's closed, but the pages are kept this amazingly undetailed but incredibly fo hyper photorealistic hand, despite the fact that it's a few brushstrokes for the highlights on a middle tone and a few shadows, it feels so real when you stand a few yards back. And the same thing with that ring. It's a couple of brushstrokes, but you literally follow time as you spiral out of a closed book. It's telling you that he kept the page. It, oh, he's married subconsciously. You're learning this. Oh, what's this? His body is leaning away from the book. This, he's moved away from what he was doing, and now he's in an agitated state. By the leaning of the torso, you could tell that he's in an, an agitated state. By the placement of his feet, the, the, the extreme perspective, right? You've yep. got the foot representing where he was in, in the past of calmly sitting and you've got this leg that he's recently brought forward to come toward you that's literally pointing toward the viewer right like everything about this is such incredibly brilliant storytelling so and then you can you can follow that spiral right down to the hand clutching the arm of the chair which not only represents agitation but also physical movement and something so critical which is sort of anticipation He's clutching right, right. because he's getting a grip because he's likely going to stand up. Or at least that's the threat. And not necessarily that he's going to start a fight, but there is a sword back there at the ready. That's not yeah. an accident. All of these right. things convey very specific emotions and potentials and the past. One tiny little image with just masterful brushstrokes, masterful storytelling. But if you look at any one thing, it is made out of a, a relative handful of brushstrokes, lacking an immense amount of detail. Look at that hair, which looks so hyper-realistic if you look at it from a distance. It's got like two highlight colors, a mid-tone, and I mean, it's so few brushstrokes relative to the insane level of realism that it evokes in the viewer. Like, look at the tassels on the, the, the end of the, you know, the so few brushstrokes. Choosing the perfect color, the perfect value, and the perfect brushstroke to convey all of that information and to create a hyper-real and exaggerated sense of everything that was relevant to the story. This right. is just a portrait of a dude sitting in a chair. Yep. So yeah, it, it seems yeah. like so simple in terms of the elements in the scene, but so much is conveyed. Yeah, yeah, it's, so, it's amazing. So, excuse me. So, everyone, if this is interesting to you, if you want to become better as an artist, 
start, like we're only going to cover a handful. I want to keep this video pretty short, but um, this is achieving a level of brilliance that can only come from years and years of dedication to learning how things work and learning the rules so that you can intentionally bend or break those rules. Thanks everyone for watching.